it's going it's starting hello hello everybody uh, this is Matt small at vector unit and um, I'm here with uh, Deb Chanston Deb how are you good how are you I'm pretty good it's nice and sunny here in uh, in California how is it over in New Jersey we are on opposite ends of the United States right now yeah uh, it's uh I, I'm looking now I kind of close the curtain because there's an awful glare I think it's sunny <laughs> and humid and ugh, I miss California <laughs> yeah California is it's got its time it's got its moments it's got its moments um I uh, am really excited to be here today, Deb, because we've been, this is like our fourth or third or something live stream, and today we're going to be talking about uh, a game that's not beach buggy racing. Yeah. <laughs> Which is... <laughs> it's a nice change. <laughs> yeah, a nice little change of pace. Yeah. Um, the, uh, we're, what, the game that we're talking about is a blast from the past. Uh, it's uh, Mousebot Escape from Cat Lab. And uh, yeah, I know. And we're really excited because uh, this game is just this week launching on consoles. So it's available and now PC. and PC, Steam PC. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. And so um, it's available right now as we speak on Xbox, Steam, uh, PlayStation, and Steam PC, like and, you said. It's Switch. Uh, yeah, wait, what did I, did I forget one? Yeah, Switch. Uh, and, um, yeah, and Switch. And it's for sale this week. You can get it for 20% off on Xbox, Switch, and Steam PC. So, uh, which means it's only, like, $4. Well, in the U.S., it's $4. Yeah. I spent more on cheese in, like, one grocery <laughs> order. On, on actual <laughs> cheese. On actual cheese, yeah. Yes. <laughs> So um, I thought we would uh, start this thing off by actually uh, watching the trailer because um, we did a new, it's a remastered game for consoles and we did a new remastered trailer. And so uh, we're gonna watch that right now and uh, let's enjoy. Okay, we are back. I love that trailer. There's something about it that makes me kind of giggle each time I watch it. You did a great job on it. Oh, thank you. I um, especially love the heart chip at the end. Yeah, <laughs> the heart chip. Well, that's one of the things we'll be talking about some of the differences. For those of you who don't know, uh, Mousebot is, uh, started off as a mobile game years ago. And um, it, uh, uh, you know, so now it, and it was a free to play game on mobile, but now it's out on console. We made it, we made a bunch of changes to it uh, to make it into a um, premium game. And uh, we'll be going into some of those. You know, I think I'm going to just start playing Deb and we can kind of talk about it and answer people's questions uh, while we play. Yes. Um, sorry, I had to reload the chat on my screen and now yeah. it's going. No, sorry, I wasn't saying hi to people because it just wasn't there. That's totally <laughs> fine. Now it's alive. Yeah. Um, the uh, So this is the premium version of Mousebot. I have a game here which um, I've already played a little ways in. I already played the first level, the first chapter, sorry. And so I'm going to play one of the levels. I'm going to play a few of the levels from the uh, second chapter. Boo. So... You can see we've got, uh, if you're not familiar with Mousebot, it's basically a game where you're a mechanical robotic mouse running through a series of mazes that have been set up by these uh, cat scientists. And you're trying to collect as much cheese as possible um, because you and can- And not die. What's that? And not and die. And not die. Yeah, yeah, and not die, basically. That's kind of the key part. Oh, 
I missed that heart chip. So one of the <laughs> yeah, I can always go back and get it. One of the things that we changed um, in this version is you can see I have a number of lives up on top. Uh, I have two lives left right now, and uh, here we go. I just finished that level. Yay! I have a whole bunch of tasks for each level that I have to do. Uh, so I finished the maze. I collected some, but not all of the cheese, and I didn't die, which I feel pretty good about. It's always satisfying. It is. <laughs> <clears throat> it's uh, I feel a sense of accomplishment by not dying, but um, one of the things that you get when uh, one of the things that you can do while you play this game is you can upgrade the number of lives that you have, and so um, right now I have two lives, and if I collect more heart chips, there's one coming up here. There we go. So I collected a heart chip, and I'll get rewarded that heart chip during the reward sequence at the end and uh, as I collect more heart chips I will upgrade the number of lives that I have and the lives basically are how many times I get to retry each level so if you run out of lives you have to start from the very beginning of the level here we go so now cha-ching I got a little bit more I have to fill in that little pie uh, in order to in order to uh, upgrade my lives if you're just joining us now, uh, we've got Tim in the chat. She's under Vector Tim, and that's our lead artist. Dropping some knowledge on the chat room. Yeah, we've got some of our favorite fans too. Hey, Lewis, and Matt Hano's here. Oh, that's awesome. These are all names I love to hear. <laughs> oh, man. The early levels, I mean, I gotta say, when you're first, uh, when you've gotten used to playing the game, the early levels are not super hard, but they get harder and you really do have to concentrate. And they get harder really fast. In the beginning, you're like, I got plenty of lives. And then after a few minutes, or after a few chapters, uh, all of a sudden, like three or four lives backup doesn't really seem like very much as a deb. Sorry, I got distracted. I was just actually asking like, what, what our favorite cheese is. That's fine. I totally... Uh, my favorite cheese, I'm going to go with something basic, like uh, just straight up sharp cheddar. I love sharp cheddar. That's what I said. I was like, I'm boring. I love cheddar. <laughs> Ba-ching! Okay, I think that was the last one. Yes! I finished. I got some extra cheese. And so before we... Uh, we have a special video that Tim prepared for us. Um... And it's but, awesome. And it's awesome. But before we watch that video, I'm going to show you what you can do with the cheese, which is so now in this game, I've collected 955 cheese, you can see. And what you can do is you can uh, customize your mouse bot. And so I'm going to just roll the dice, as it were, and get a mystery present. Nice. I got the Tron skin right Yay. from the beginning. It's one of my favorite skins, and I got it like the very first time. I was lucky. Nice. Let's see, I'm gonna get something else. That one, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna stick with the Tron skin, I think. You can also go in here, so you can see I have like a whole bunch of skins. This is a new game, so I haven't unlocked very many things, but there's a whole bunch of skins that if I wanted to, why not? I like polka dots, I'm gonna buy that. Boo! So you can just also, Yay. if you don't want to leave it up to chance, you can just buy the thing that you want to buy. And maybe a uh, brain pan. It's a little bit gross, but I kind of like that. It's very bizorpish. It is very bizorpish, that's true. So uh, with that in mind, with that image, the brain pan in our minds, let's talk, uh, let's listen to Tim talk a little bit about the character design for, uh, for the mouse and the cats. Yay. I'm Tim lead artist at Vector Unit. Designing a main character is important to get right. It has to have appeal, fit in with the art style and the world it lives in, and it has to be designed around functionality and gameplay. I'm gonna give you a look at some of the thought that went into the characters of Mousebot, Escape from Cat Lab. When the mouse was designed, thinking about how it reacted to the gameplay was particularly important. The visual design had to be concepted with the gameplay in mind. We had to think about what kind of movement we wanted it to have, and how that would function and look while you traveled around the maze avoiding traps and picking up cheese. 
A robotic mouse was the obvious choice. It could be friendly and cute, worked well within our studio's game engine, the Vector Engine, and it was easy to imagine a ton of possibilities in both gameplay as well as visual design. We had a lot of different ideas about what kind of movements we wanted the mouse to have. Driving, turning, jumping, and sidestepping were your basic controls. We ended up cutting the sidestepping for the first release, which was on mobile, to simplify the controls. We added it back in for the console version. We'd always really liked it, and people have more fidelity with the controller, so we felt like it would be more accepted as a benefit as opposed to unintentionally hindering the player. We took a lot of inspiration from Inspector Gadget, having telescoping machinery pop in and out of its body that would transform it, and that gave us a lot of flexibility with what kind of environments and movement we could implement, and how you could avoid each specific trap. We also had a ton of ideas that were more specific. Some of those were flying, floating in the water, hover jumping, boosting, using weapons, and more. Of course, not all of those made the cut in such a small game, but that was the beauty of it. It was easy to cut or add in different movements. Death was a fun thing to experiment with, too. We know we wanted you to feel the impact when your mouse had failed a maze. There was thought put behind what type of deaths each trap would have and the visuals that went along with it. Many of these concepts didn't make the cut due to time. We loved the idea of being able to tell where you failed in the maze, so leaving behind some evidence or a corpse was included in that design. Of course, that means leaving behind something visual that wasn't considered too gory or brutal. We ended up using a pile of mouse parts, like screws and circuit boards. Bubbles with floating skulls appear in the acid. One thing we added for the console release was the mouse's point of view camera. This added a new way to play without being too time intensive to author. It's more of a novelty, but I think it's a lot of fun. The cats are ambient, non-playable characters that you don't interact with during gameplay, so they were a lot more simplistic. The main question we had with them was, just how intelligent were they really? Would they be more anthropomorphic half-human cats wearing full outfits, or regular cats with bow ties, or somewhere in between? They ended up being somewhere in between. We didn't want them to look too smart. The boss cat character is the most anthropomorphic one, since he's the one running the whole operation. We embraced the design of the cats. They're so simplistic and immensely silly that the animations and cutscenes almost feel like a puppet show. The animations are so simple and juvenile, but we figured that they worked well in the context. They were pretty quick to author, and most importantly, they made us laugh. I hope you enjoyed this quick look into how we designed our characters. Hello, we are back. Um, that was fun. I like that video a lot. Me too. Tim, you did a great job. <laughs> yeah, you did, Tim. The uh, I really like the like one of the things about this game that really cracks me up is the cats because like you could see that cat scientist in the background there there's something about them like tim talked about this in the video but like we talked a lot about like whether they should be super smart and like clever and or whether they should be like a tiny bit dumb and <laughs> she definitely went for the tiny bit dumb and it's really really funny they make me laugh every time i see them um, so yeah, let's talk a little bit about like some of the differences, I guess, between the console version and the um, and the uh, mobile version. Mobile version, yeah. Um, well, there's new graphics, right? So everything mm -hmm. is kind of like up res, looks a little nicer, a little smoother. We also added a whole right. bunch of new levels and 20 yeah so many actually At least 20. these ones that say new right now are not actually all new levels i restarted my game with a special developer cheat that unlocks everything so i could just jump around and play some of the new levels so i'm gonna um try playing some levels but you know what i don't even know which of these are new actually so i'm just gonna play one maybe tim oh. what's that Sorry, uh, Mark Kennett asks if he's the only one slow mode. Uh, that's for everybody. It's just Whoa. so that you don't bombard us with questions over and over. Oh, Sorry. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we just needed to slow it down. That's all. Yeah, we get we get scared. Yeah, the first time we did this, it was like, whoa, this is, uh, <laughs> you know, what what I do on a regular basis, but like, very, oh, very man. It's like arcade mode. It's like arcade mode. <laughs> it's like arcade mode. Yeah, actually, arcade mode is yeah. one of the... Oh shoot, okay. This is why you need multiple lives. I totally jumped. I just realized I did something dangerous, which is 
I jumped forward in time with my special developer unlock all code, but I um, ah, but I uh, didn't give myself more lives, and so we'll do that when the next video is coming. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we'll see if I can do some of these later levels with only two lives. Ooh, that was close. So uh, let's see. Oh, so yeah, we've so got. The, oh yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so we do have an arcade mode coming up. I did mention it briefly. So Matt's gonna play that a little bit later, and then we'll answer your questions uh, while he's playing. Oh, you can even so, answer now. Right, yeah, if you got oh, that, some. Yeah, that, that too. <laughs> the uh, um, so we've got like a whole bunch of new levels, twenty new levels that have been added to the game. Most of them on the harder end. Um, we also have uh, this new life system that we talked about. And hopefully, if I can make it to the end of this level, I'll be able to demonstrate me getting a new life. Um, oh, here we go. I think I'm going to make it. I think I'm going to make it. Oh, God. Oh, that was close. OK. Ah, yay, I got a new life. Now I have three lives that I can use to squeak my way through the various levels. I'm going to demonstrate on one of the easier levels, somewhat easier levels. Um, another new thing that we added, which is the sidestep move. So the mouse, as you play through the game, the mouse learns different abilities, like here I am, transforming. And so I can transform, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. transform into a uh, mouse boat. See, mouse boat. Oh, that's, oh cute. I yeah, didn't think boat. of that. Clever. Mm. Um, and uh, I can transform into a mouse boat. There's my remains. It's very sad. Um, and then I can jump, sort of Inspector Gadget style. And then I can also sidestep. I don't know if I really need to sidestep on this level, but maybe I'll just do it because it's fun. I just really like the way the mouse looks when he sidesteps. Yeah. Or it, I should say. I was so proud of myself when I like got the knack of going under the lasers and the surfing at the same time. Yeah, you got to go under the lasers and over the uh, over the cheese graters when they're in yeah. the water. <sighs> I need that. I must have that. Oh man, I got blowed up. So Tim is actually like. The, the champion when it comes to speed racing in Mousebot, she's the one who like, sets the, the Sets the track. times. Yeah. yeah, so, oh man, I don't even know if I'm going to make this. Um, yeah, actually, that's I'm glad you brought that up because that uh, that is another thing that we added was there used to be, I'm not going to go for that thing. I just am going to try to survive <laughs> so I can somewhat salvage my dignity. Um, the uh, So one thing that we added was a bunch of new goals. So you can replay the levels with different goals in mind. Um, one is you can try to get every single, you can try to get the most possible cheese, max cheese, which in this case was 20 and I was off by one cheese piece. Uh, you can also get the heart chip, which I failed to do. Finish without dying, also fail, I'm starting to feel bad. And then finish very quickly. Um, and so I'm going to do an easier level. Let's see if I can do one of these earlier levels and do it very quickly. Um, eh, it doesn't have to be that one. Here, let's try this one. So I have 48 seconds to do this level. The trick is you basically have to do it as, take as short a line as possible through yeah, no zigzagging. as little as possible. Yeah. And I will say, actually, a little pro tip, Deb, is uh, jumping straight up and down does not slow you down, but sidestepping does slow you down a little bit. Ooh. Just a tiny, tiny bit, but it's enough. I don't know. I feel like I already am not going to get the best time, but let's see. Sometimes I just can't resist getting the cheese. It's like... I know. Yeah, it's in your path. It calls to me. Also, it's difficult to play this game and talk. Like a lot of our play tests, we had to be like, okay, oh! the meeting's over. <laughs> Look it, I was two oh, one hundredths no. of a second off. So, not that easy. 
Whoa. Not that easy. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, that's one of the goals. And then, of course, once you get all of those goals and finish all of the levels, you unlock the nefarious. Look at all these levels. There's so many levels now. There's 88 levels. Yeah. And then every chapter you unlock new and more horrible uh Horrible traps. I'll try one of these. I, I don't think I can do it while I'm talking. So maybe you can like field some questions or something in the while we chat. Uh, sure. One of the questions that we're getting is uh, adding multiplayer to Beach Buggy Racing 2. Uh, we we won't do that. <laughs> uh, there's already asynchronous online multiplayer uh, in the mobile version. And then if you really wanted to play with your friends, you can play on the console or Steam PC version, uh, and it's up to eight players depending on your platform. So um, there's like a really long discussion thread on the Steam forums, um, you know, explaining why it's best local and you know on the couch and with other people. <laughs> So, and there also there are yeah. reasons too for why it's actually difficult for this game for us. Yeah, I mean the thing is with online multiplayer generally you kind of have to plan for it when you're first sort of designing the game and creating all the physics code and stuff like that. And we always intended. Oh man, I just did the exact same thing. We always sort of intended it for it to be a local game, and it would be preposterously hard to go back and add multiplayer online multiplayer at this point. But if you're looking for that kind of experience, play Riptide GP Renegade. Yeah, That's you can play that online. Awesome experience. <clears throat> this and it game... often goes on sale. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this game, Mousebot, is single player only. By the way, I totally just did one of the boss cat levels, so I feel pretty good about that. Oh, sorry. That's OK. <laughs> it's fine. You don't, I don't need that. I don't need congratulations all the time. I can congratulate myself. Um, <laughs> I am going to pop us over so we can watch uh, the other video that Tim did, which is all about the trap design, which is fun and diabolical at the same time. So um, let's watch Tim's trap design video. And then when we come back, uh, I'll try my hand at uh, arcade mode. Yeah. Vector Unit is a very small team. We're currently five strong. You have to be creative and innovative if you want to have a short turnaround for development. The original mouse bot was created in a few months, and we had even less time to add some additional content and polish for the console release. I'm Tim, the lead artist at Vector Unit, and I'm going to talk a little bit about what that design process was like. A lot of inspiration came from old school cartoons like Looney Tunes and Pinky and the Brain. We layered in as much cat and mouse detail to form this world that mouse bot took place in. From cheesy puns to giant cat face stompers to ambiently placed open tuna cans, Mostly everything has a layer of ridiculous built into it. Things that don't necessarily have a cat or mouse theme still appear silly and like they come straight from a mail order Acme magazine. Cats can't read, so we wanted as little text as possible. I've never really liked tutorials, especially ones that are wordy, long, and tedious. So for Mousebot, every chapter starts off with a sort of invisible tutorial, introducing you to a new trap slowly at first, and then adding more complex layouts and timing. That way you have plenty of time to process what it is and how to avoid it. The tutorials are woven into the game itself and not nearly as explicit. Each trap serves a particular purpose. The hallway was broken up into a 4x2 grid. We thought about what grid sections we wanted each trap to take up and what timing and movement patterns we wanted each trap to have. This was all before deciding what each trap would look like. Gameplay came first and visuals came after. The entire game is actually built on a grid and is made up of snappable tiles. We were able to create levels fairly quickly with this tile-based system and have 88 levels in the console version. We wanted the timing on each trap to be consistent per level, so the same level was predictable and the timing on all of the traps was the same with each playthrough. If we started the animation of every trap at the beginning of the level, there were too many variables caused by different driving patterns that would mess up the timing on the next setup of traps. This was solved by breaking up our levels into a series of chunks based on passing through doorways or driving around corners. There was a lot of effort putting very specific timing and delays into the trap animations so we could use them in a variety of different ways and patterns. The Kitty Crusher probably has the most variations. 
It's the first trap that you encounter, aside from the basic mouse trap. It was one of the first traps that we concepted. I think it's my favorite trap design. I mean, it looks like a mean cat head. What's not to love? The color palette was a huge part of the visual design. Red and green were the main colors chosen to signify danger. That way, you knew to avoid it when you looked at it. It brought another level of organization to the levels. The silhouettes, placement, timing, and color of all of the traps are distinct. All of these elements together helped form an easy to read and predictable experience. Both the gameplay and technical boundaries led to the overall visual style we developed. Everything had to work hand in hand. Okay, we are back. Uh, that was my favorite video of the two that she did. Yeah. I told her so just before this. So. <laughs> Good. I like that video too. Um, the uh, Yeah, I mean, a lot of work went into thinking about all those traps and about the timing of them and all that kind of stuff. Um, it and seems, testing and retuning. Yeah. Oh my gosh, so much testing. The um, I mean, the, you know, Mousebot is a pretty hard game. You know what? Uh, Wait, I'm gonna go back. Mousepot is a pretty hard game. It's one of the hardest games I think that we've made, um, and we did that kind of on purpose because we want. It starts off really easy, and you'll see that in this next uh, section, but um, but it definitely gets a lot harder. So hard, I can't even do the last two levels. Yet. <laughs> I should go back. I probably can now. <laughs> yeah, now you probably can. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, Deb, we're gonna jump into one of my favorite features of the console version of Mousebot, which is arcade mode. Yeah. This little flashy guy down here. And when you're playing the game, you will see this button. It's grayed out and you click on it and it says it's not available until you finish the game, which means that after you play through all 10 chapters boop, 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 of Mousebot and you finish the final boss fight chapter and you get the exciting ending, uh, you'll unlock arcade mode and arcade mode is I'm just gonna jump into it and we can talk about it while we're playing yeah so one thing about arcade mode is it's super fast you can see it's actually 50% faster um, and you just start off on the very first level of the game which as you can see is pretty easy and uh, you just play through as fast oh I missed one and you try to get as high a score as you can um, you can see up in the upper left-hand corner, my best score so far in this game is uh, 316 cheese. So I'm going to try to beat that on this run. Lula says, best hard game for you guys this far. 10 out of 10 would rage quit again. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is definitely a rage quitty kind of game, but in a good way. The good kind of rage quit. And if you need hints, you can always write to me at support at vectorunit.com and I will pass on what knowledge I can. <laughs> it's true. The um, uh, one thing about arcade mode is the way that the lives work is a little bit different, Deb. The, um, uh, you can see I have two lives up there and um, I'm gonna get another heart chip. Bam, so I just added another heart chip. And because everything is instantaneous in um, arcade mode, your lives carry through from one level to the next. And so as I add more lives, when I run out of lives, the game is over and my score will be frozen in time for all eternity. Or until you do it again. Or until I do <laughs> it again. Exactly. Um, and, oh man, I missed that heart chip and that cheese. Oh. I was scared of the stompers. Yeah, it happens. <laughs> One thing about the fast speed is I have a really hard time with the, the stompers. See, I almost got hit by that one. If you have a really high score on arcade mode, feel free to share it on our um, social channels and I will share it. And then uh, we can see who gets the highest. Um, yeah. What do you know what your high score is? Um, I haven't played that far in arcade mode. <laughs> That's okay. It's arcade mode is pretty hard. It's, yeah. uh, one thing that I have noticed when I've played, oh man, see this just happened. Is it illustrate a case in point. One thing I've noticed in arcade mode is that I often lose a life on one of the earlier levels because I'm overconfident. I'll just put you in your place. 
Exactly. And I'm not concentrating. I lose my concentration. This is actually very high skill because, like, you're talking while you're playing and, Thank you know. You. Yeah, we often just abandon our meeting <laughs> to be like, okay, we're gonna do the speed run now. Can't talk. Need to concentrate. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then we're all trying to, like, beat each other. So... I'm actually really proud of myself for setting, like, the starting thing. Only to be, like, totally annihilated later. <laughs> yeah. The, um... There are a bunch of the, like you were saying earlier, Tim, who designed almost all of the levels, um, is really, really good at going through these levels. Like, so she was the one that did most of the testing for, see? She was the one, this might be a short game. She was the one that did most of the testing for um, some of the achievements. Speed runs. Yeah, yeah, the speed runs and also the achievements, like can you make it uh, all the way through? Without dying. Exactly. Yeah. There are a number of levels later on that I can definitely not at this point in my evolution as a mouse bot uh, make it all the way through without dying. And my specialty was cheese for a while. Cheese and heart chip. And then it was like, no, no, no I can't do the rest. Tim's gonna have to do that. <laughs> so. Sometimes there's no shame in uh, pausing every now and then too. Right? There's no shame in that. Yeah. Yeah, go for it if you need to. I'm not going to yet. Oh, okay. Soon. There's also no shame in just saying, you know what, I'm not going to get that cheese. Yeah. That cheese was not meant for me. That's actually like the whole secret of doing the speedruns, just avoid the cheese. Yeah, I mean, you <laughs> can definitely... You can just straight up avoid the cheese. And on some of the earlier levels especially, if you avoid the cheese... Oh man, I got greedy. Um, if you avoid the cheese on the earlier levels, then uh, you can pretty much just like drive through. So that's one tip if you're stuck. But then later on in the game, you can't do that. You have to, you really have to face your cheese. <laughs> Especially if you want all the costumes and stuff. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, who doesn't want all the costumes? Yeah. So, hey, um, we're getting to the end of our time slot. Yeah, what um, else are we going to talk about? I was gonna go through all the blog, sorry, the the newsletter content, um, because hardly anybody reads it, <laughs> and that's where we put all our good stuff, like the the proper news that you'll get even before I post it on Facebook or Twitter. So, uh, Matt's gonna keep playing. I'll tell you what's in it, and then um, if you have any burning questions, you can try to answer them, or sorry, ask them here. And if not, there's like a million ways to contact me to ask them later. Um, so thank you very much to people who participated in the fan art contest. Um, you can go to vectorunit.com slash blog and see the winning um, entry, which is Claire's. Um, super fun and great. Um, and I also put up the uh, like our runners up so you can see some of the top entries too. Um, there's, thank you to all the people who sent us fan art over the last month. Um, we included a mini gallery in the newsletter. And um, those pieces are also available on our website in the fan art section. Um, our tea public store is on sale for up to 35% until July 25th. That and is can... a great deal. Yeah, it really is. Um, and you can go to www.vectorunit.com slash store. Um, I say the www part because like sometimes that helps it along. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> the connection gets weird for the shortcut. Um, you want to talk about Android TV? Sure, we could talk about that. Um, actually, before we do, I'm going to mention something that I forgot to mention earlier, which if you were watching me play just a minute ago, uh, I switched into another new feature that we have in the console version of Mousebot, which is Terminator mode. So you can switch into uh, Mousebot cam, which uh, doesn't really make it easier. In fact, it kind of makes it harder, but uh, I think it's really fun. Oh, there you go. Now I'm. Gonna and how do you get to Terminator mode? Uh, you hit the well on like an Xbox controller, for example. You hit the Y button to switch cameras. There you go. So there you go. So uh, now you had asked about. Uh, oh yeah, new platforms. Oh, Easter eggs. 
Oh yeah, there was an Easter egg there too. So we also, yeah. another uh, thing of course that we added for consoles is like achievements and stuff. So there's a bunch of new, yo, there's a bunch of new achievements. Um, there are the Easter egg achievements, which were there before I believe, but um, there's also new achievements for finishing all the mazes without dying, you know, maxing out all the cheese, stuff like that. Um, so we were going to talk about... Uh, oh, um, so we have great news. Uh, Beach Buggy Racing 2 Island Adventure is um, coming to Android TV. We don't know when, but we're working on it. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming fairly soon, I think. Uh, we actually have it working. We just need to test it a whole bunch. Um, and yeah, we came out uh, a while back with uh, Beach Buggy Racing Island Adventure for Apple TV. And now, yes, it's gonna be coming to Android TV. And this is the full Beach Buggy Racing Island Adventure experience. Whoops, there we go. <laughs> 272. Oh. Um, yeah, the full, whoops. But while talking, very good. Yes, while that talking. get you like an extra 100 <laughs> points or something. Uh, hold on a second. Okay, so while you're... Okay. While I'm, we're having a little technical difficulty. Okay, we're back. Okay. Uh, there we go. Um, yes, Beach Buggy Racing 2 Island Adventure is going to be coming to Android TV. And it's the full experience with, um, you know, split screen multiplayer, uh, the adventure mode, like all of that stuff. It's going to be... It's going to be wonderful. Yeah. Um, and now we can talk about what's coming to uh, PBR2 on mobile. Um, we're still working on our update. Uh, we've got a level cap increase coming, and that means a lot of retuning for the whole game. Um, so people keep asking about when it's coming, and uh, we don't know because it's, it requires a lot of testing before we release the build. So um, yeah, that's... Huh. That's really where the delay comes from. It's true. I mean, if you think about it, it takes, yeah. whoa, it takes, uh, you know, a long time to level your game up from, say, level 10 to level 11. And now we have 12, 13, 14, all the way up to 20. And so just testing all of those levels, even with uh, some cheating that we have this special magical ability to do, uh, it just takes a long time. Plus, there's some other stuff coming into the update, which, um, uh, yeah, we're going to be adding some more cars, which are going to be coming out in um, sort of like a staged release. So there'll be some new cars. And mm -hmm. um, what else, there's Deb? A, there's a, a new vehicle purchasing system. So we're going to put them in the garage. Um, so you don't need to wait for a special to come around if you missed a car special. Like yes. It'll be in the garage, and then you can you, you have the it. option of, of buying it then. Um, yeah, we, we're changing to a, a paid model for vehicles. For some of the cars. Um, for there's some of the cars, Because yeah, okay. there's some cars that were, like, special, like, they only ever showed up for sales and stuff like that. And so those are going to be always available now if you want to buy one, like you were saying. And, um, yeah. And then there's also... Um, uh, the wasteland. Is is yes, coming. the wasteland. I can't believe I forgot yeah. that. The that wasteland. was no. It was at the bottom of the list because it was like the big news. <laughs> so there you go. The wasteland yeah. level, which has been available for uh, console players, um, is now going to be available um, or unlockable, I should say, uh, for mobile players. So that's going to be happening. Um, in the next update too. And um, alongside that, uh, we're gonna have like some special events releasing some of the new Wasteland cars too. Yeah, and for all the people who keep asking about Hot Wheels, sorry, the standard answer that I put across the board is that it's not coming for the foreseeable future. But never say never, we are always full of surprises, but yeah, so far it's not coming for the foreseeable future. Like I repeat this over and over and over. People love Hot Wheels cars. Forms. They do, they do. Um, but if you really miss them, they're available as uh, downloadable content DLC in the 
console version. That is true. So, you can yeah. uh, play the console version and you can get your Hot Wheels on. Not only are and there Hot Wheels. More. Yeah, I mean, there's like new Hot Wheels tracks. There's all kinds of Hot Wheels stuff yeah. in the and Hot even Wheels. Even more cars. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's more, true. Even more cars than we released in the mobile version so long ago. Yeah, so. that was a long time ago. Yeah. Um, anyway, so there's there's hopefully the be all end all answer for that, <laughs> so, which I'm going to be answering tomorrow as well. That's that's okay. <laughs> yeah. We love questions. We do. We do. <laughs> so just, I just we you know, like I'm answering not... the same question over and over. Yeah. Um let's see. Well I think we're gonna wrap up pretty soon. Yeah. Um was there any other uh, sort of items of business that we wanted to talk about here, Deb? Um Oh, if you have a technical support question, um, and you need to email me at support at vectorunit.com. Um, and it's about a purchase, please include your receipt that includes the name of the item that you bought and the game and the date. Because um, a lot of people like to just send me their bank statement and I can't do anything with that. <laughs> and it happens a lot. So also, you know what, generally speaking, yeah. sending your bank statement across the internet to total strangers like us. <laughs> yeah. Like, this is, this is transaction went through it all that. Yeah, I, we I don't. don't There's a lot of numbers in that. Yeah, I don't need that. We don't want to encourage people to do that. Yeah. We do try to help. We try our best to help. It's just sometimes, sometimes things go wrong on the internet. Yeah. And especially if your connection cuts out, and then that's, that's usually why your transaction won't complete. So. Uh -huh. Yeah. But there are easy ways to fix that. So if you email me your, your receipt, um, then, or uh, the email address that you use for your Google Play transactions, then I can look up your transaction very quickly and it takes hardly any time to solve that for you. Um, and, you know, it, sometimes it's really great connecting with um, some of our fans that way too. So, yeah. Anyway, thank you. Those are my points of business that I, you know, <laughs> wanted to get <laughs> I'm off glad. my chest. I'm glad yeah. we covered all of that. <laughs> thank you. So, um, Let's see. So I guess we should wrap up. And just to sort of let people know again, this is Mousebot, the console version, the remastered, super excellent console version, which is now <laughs> available. As we speak, people could go straight to the Xbox, Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4, or Steam websites, um, or go hop onto their consoles if they have them and, uh, and buy it. Yeah, it's and ready. you should get it this week because um, it's on sale for 20% off yes. on Switch and Xbox and Steam PC. Yeah, so this so is a good now time. The time. Yeah, and it's like, it's $4. And yeah, so I mean, even sale. when it's not on sale, it's That's only $5. True. And oh, now man. that it's on sale, it's $4 which is yes, it's even yeah. better deal. It's so much, so much fun just for, uh, for such a small amount of money. Uh, okay, so here we go. I'm gonna, as we sign off, I'm gonna switch myself into um, Angel Wing. Angel Wing Tiger yeah. Mouse. Angel Wing Tiger Mouse is going to sail off into the sunset and we are gonna say goodbye to all our friends on YouTube. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank you for joining us. And thank you so much to all the people who, like, their time zone is such that you have to wake up at the crack of dawn to be with us at this time. Yeah. We really appreciate you joining us for that. Yeah, we totally do. And um, uh, we hope you enjoy the game. We hope that, uh, you know, if you have more questions, feel free to hit us up on Facebook or Twitter um, or send us an email. Yeah. Email is actually, like, the best way to reach us. So you can reach us at support at vectorunit.com or info at vectorunit.com. And I will be your first point of contact. Exactly. And especially remember, Deb loves being asked questions about when the Hot Wheels cars are coming. To Beach Buggy <laughs> oh, no. So make sure to send lots of those questions. <laughs> you know, Deb really loves polite emails. Yes. Those get answered. No, actually, I totally just order, like, I answer them consecutively. <laughs> there you go. One after another. Yeah. But all those right. ones put a smile on my face. Anyway. Well, thank you very much, Deb, for all of your support email answering and for joining me today. 
Thank you for the multitasking. Oh, that was God. rad. <laughs> this game is really hard to play. I feel like and I didn't talk. really uh, I didn't really talk about things as coherently as I should have because I was too busy getting dismembered. But, um, <laughs> That's okay. We'll um, we'll put up Tim's um, videos. Oh, sorry. Yes. No. Well, this will be in the live stream. Um, yeah, but we'll but also post replaced. those videos so. too, so people can watch them later. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Thank you for clearing that up. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Okay. See you. Adios.